All right, part two, emotions. Now, I've said before, there's actually no such thing as a negative emotion. There's really not. Your emotions are a navigational system. That's what they're designed to do. Your emotions are designed to help you make your way through this world and feed you information about what's going on around you and how you're reacting to it. They let you know if you're on track or if you're off track. And that's fine. But here's the thing. Your emotions live in your subconscious mind, which you may have heard me say before, that your subconscious mind is like a five-year-old with the mind of a supercomputer. Your subconscious mind takes everything 100% literally. That's why if you say, if you have a habit of saying things like, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did that, or oh, I'm so fat, I can't believe this. Yeah, don't do that. Do not do that. Because the part of your mind that never forgets anything ever is hearing that and believes you. When you talk to yourself, imagine you're talking to a five-year-old. Honestly, that's the best way to think about it. That's why I was saying before in the last section that you need to uh, tell yourself you're great and I love you. You have to start c building that up, start cultivating that, right? Now notice, I didn't say to go and tell yourself that you're fantastic and you're sexy and you're brilliant and beautiful and gorgeous and oh my God, look at you, I love you. Mwah. You don't have to do that. You might, you know, I think you might have some idea what I say to myself in the mirror. <laughs> no, I'm not that bad, I promise. I'm almost that bad, but I'm not that bad. You just have to say, you're great and I love you. Just start cultivating that relationship. Start showing yourself some emotional tenderness, okay? If you're mad. So many people have just anger built up inside of them, right? Well, use it. Do something with it. Here's the thing. Fear is a call to action, a call to preparation. Fear is a call to preparation. If there's something that you're worried about that's going to happen, start getting ready for it so that when it happens, you'll be prepared, Anger is a call to action. If you're mad about something, you're just supposed to do something. You're not supposed to do something stupid, by the way. <laughs> I'm not saying get mad and hit somebody or get mad and break something. That's not what I'm talking about. But you can tap into that energy and use it for a positive outcome. You can use it for change, okay? Like, you know, even jealousy Right? Jealousy has a place. Actually, I wrote an article ages ago on TheExaminer.com called The Seven Deadly Sins, I think, where I took, no, Missing the Mark or the Wages of Sin. That's what it was called. And what I did in that one was I took all of the seven deadly sins and I showed how they actually all can have a positive manifestation. See, everything that your mind does, everything your subconscious does, everything that you feel inside is your mind-body system trying to help you. It really is trying to help you. But sometimes it's not helping, okay? The reason why I've made such a big deal in the past about parents and your relationships, especially little girls with their dads and little boys with their moms, is because you learn at an early age from your parents what love looks like, okay? What love is supposed to be. You learn from how your parents interact with each other, or if your parents aren't together, how they interact with other men and women. And you learn from how they interact with you. And that's how you learn your own value. That's how you learn how the world works. That's how you learn what love manifests as. Okay? Because kids come from the factory, pre-programmed, with the idea that my parents love me. Okay? And you'll never really break the idea that your parents love you. If anything, if you have bad parents, it just warps your idea of what love is. You understand that? So that's why if you had an emotionally unavailable father, you find yourself again and again in emotionally unavailable with relationships with emotionally unavailable men. Because that's what love looked like. Because that's what your dad looked like. If you had a verbally abusive, domineering, micromanaging mother then you might find yourself in relationships with those people, or you find yourself dominating and micromanaging your significant other. Because that's what you learn love looks like. This was not a conscious choice you made. This was not something that you just sat down and said, oh, I'm just going to, you know, dominate and be a control freak from now on, because that's how I'll show I love people. It's not like that. It's the deeper part of you, the subconscious part of you, made this choice and is continuing to play out this choice, okay? Your conscious mind, your conscious mind has nothing to do with emotions. Your conscious mind makes choices. Your conscious mind organizes and compresses things and puts things into boxes and makes decisions, which is cool, 
That's fine. You need that. It's your subconscious. It's the part underneath. It's the, the rest of the iceberg. It's where all of this stuff lives. And so you kind of got to get in there and wrestle with it. And that's one of the best things that a coach is for. I mentioned at the beginning of last episode about coaching and what I do. This is one of the main things that I do to help people figure out where these patterns came from and how to break them. Okay? Because you and everybody else are doing the best that you can. I know you're doing the best you can. I know you are. Everybody is. Okay? You may want to do better, but you're doing the best that you can right now. And that's fine. What you have to do is figure out how to get in and change the program. That's why, you know, I give you these tools and these neat little tricks and things you can do. It comes from a school of thought, some of you might have already figured this out, called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I'm not going to talk too much about NLP right now, but I want you to know the P is in programming. We are like computers. We really are. Like I said, your subconscious is like a supercomputer. You'd be shocked the thing that your mind is capable of, the amount of data that you can process, the amount of things that you can retain. Everybody's brilliant. Everybody's brilliant. The only difference between a normal person and a genius is the genius is tapping more of those resources. It's like what you're doing with your mind and your emotions and your body and your potential in your life is like you've got a hundred bedroom mansion that you choose to stay in one room, maybe two, maybe five, but you're leaving the rest of the rooms untapped, right? That's not what you want to do. You want to learn to tap into your feelings and use them. Let yourself be happy. When was the last time you just had a huge smile on your face? Just a huge smile. I make a deal with you. Just smile with me for a second. I won't even look you in the eye in case it makes you look weird. Nope, yes I will. I'm going to look in the eye and you look away if it makes you look weird. Because maybe you want me to look at you. Let's just smile for a second. Now, don't you feel a little bit better? You might feel a little weird. But if you feel a little weird, it's again, you're just not used to being happy. And that's unfortunate. You know, if you've had me do this, it's a really neat thing. I can read people through pictures. You show me two or three pictures of somebody, I can tell you everything about them. Just from how they look, how they stand, their body positioning, what they're wearing, the look on their face, their orientation, and just a couple of other things. I don't want to give away all my tricks. But one of the things that I look for first is whether or not it's an authentic smile. Whether or not that person is truly happy. And you'd be surprised how many people are not truly happy even in the midst of like really great situations, like something huge can be happening and they'll still be like bound up. And that's sad. That's really sad. Let go. Let it out. What are you afraid of? Embrace the world. Embrace life. Embrace your feelings. If you need to cry, cry. If you need to scream, scream. As long as you don't hurt anybody, okay? Get as mad as you want. Go hit a heavy bag. Go punch your bed. Put pillows up on your bed and punch it. That's great. Don't hurt another human being, by the way. Okay? And don't just yell and scream at people for nothing. Like, maybe you got to go out in the garage and just yell. Like, don't hurt somebody else in your venting. But you got to let these things out. You cannot hold them in. You cannot hold them in. I know somebody who every time he gets mad, every time he gets into a fight with his girlfriend, he gets mad and storms out of the room or storms out of the house or like will storm out of the restaurant and just like leave her behind. And then later on, he doesn't understand what she's upset about. You can't do that. Okay. You cannot do that. If you need space, it's fine for you to tell somebody else and say, look, I'm mad right now. Just give me a minute. Because if we keep talking, I'm going to just say something out of anger and I'm going to say something I regret. Just give, just give me a second, okay? And if you're on the other side of that, if your partner says, look, I just cannot talk about this right now. I really can't. Respect that. Give them a little space. Give them a little room. And then revisit the topic later. You don't have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing either, okay? Remember, in a relationship... This is in a romantic relationship especially, but even in a friend relationship, even in a business relationship. If you can't communicate, you don't have anything, okay? So you have to learn to trust your own feelings and find a way to express them in a healthy way. And trust other people's feelings and let them express them to you in a healthy way, okay? I'm running out of time, so I'm going to wind this up, but... I really just want to say again, just trust yourself. It's fine. Everything you do is trying to help, okay?